When adding an image to a button design, you may find that you'd prefer to remove the background. Here, for example, I have a photo of a hot air balloon, and the sky in the background is getting in the way of my overall design. Fortunately, it's easy to automatically remove the background from many images. To get started, I'll first click on the image itself to make sure it's selected, and then I'll go to the Images and Shapes tab and choose the Eraser. That will bring up the Remove Background workspace, where I can get started automatically removing the sky from this image. To do that, I'll first select the Magic Wand tool, and then I can simply come out to the image and click in the background that I want to remove. The image will be evaluated, and then the border of that background, in other words, the edge of the foreground object, will be selected. You can see the yellow overlay here. The size of that overlay translates into how large an area will be evaluated. If the foreground object has a relatively crisp edge, you could use a small size, and if it has a fuzzy edge, you could use a larger size. That size is adjusted with the border control here. You just need to adjust the border size before clicking into the image with the magic wand tool. In addition, there is a tolerance setting. If you find that the border is extending too far into your foreground object, that means that you need to reduce the tolerance. And if the border is not extending all the way to the edge of that object, so for example, if that border remained in the sky rather than all the way to the balloon, then you would want to increase the tolerance value. In this case, the default settings worked perfectly well for this hot air balloon, so the next thing I need to do is to define which areas of the image represent the foreground object versus the background that I want to remove. I'll start with the foreground, so I'll click on the Select Foreground button, that's the green circle icon, and then I'll simply paint across my foreground object to identify that this is my foreground area. I'll then choose the Select Background tool, the red circle, and paint a swath across the background, the sky in this case. Now that I've defined those areas, I can process the result by simply clicking the Convert button. The image will then be processed, and as you can see, over on the right side, we have the hot air balloon cut out from the background. Of course, you might notice I made a little bit of a mistake at the top right corner. I neglected to select that top right corner, the area of sky just outside the balloon, but I can very easily fix that. I'll go back to my Before image, and then choose the Magic Wand tool once again, and click inside of the sky, that area at the top right corner of the image, and as you can see, another border has been added for the hot air balloon. Since that little area of sky represents a background area, I'll also want to choose the Select Background tool and paint into that area. To update the result, I can simply click that Convert button one more time, and the image will be processed, and you can see now I have a much better result. Of course, I'll want to evaluate the image to make sure I have a good result here. To begin with, I'd like to get a closer look. I'll expand the after view of my hot air balloon. Both the before and after preview areas can be expanded using the double arrow button at the top right corner of either view. So I'll click the button for the after view to expand that view, and then I'll click the zoom in button in order to zoom in closer on my hot air balloon. I could also use the hand tool to click and pan around the image to check various areas. You can see that the default preview shows me a checkerboard pattern indicating transparency behind the balloon. I can also get a better sense of the exact edge of that balloon by choosing the second preview option up here at the top right of the preview area. I'll click the button and you can see that I now get a red outline showing me the edge of the object that was detected, the hot air balloon in this case, and to help make that edge a little bit easier to see, there's also a dark overlay on top of my foreground object. I can keep the red outline but get rid of that overlay by choosing the last of those preview options. But what I find especially helpful is to place a completely different color in place of the background that was removed. So I'll go back to my first preview option and then click the pop-up to the left where I can choose any color I'd like to use for evaluating the quality of my result. So here a nice bright green that contrasts with the balloon and I can see that I have a good separation from the balloon versus the background. I'll go ahead and zoom out on my hot air balloon image here, and you can see that the image has been cropped right up to the edge of the balloon itself. That's because the auto checkbox is turned on, but if you prefer to crop manually, you could turn off the auto checkbox and then adjust the settings. So, for example, I could increase the value for X to move my crop box horizontally, or I could adjust the value for Y in order to adjust the vertical position, 
and of course I could adjust the size of my crop box with the width or height controls. But in most cases, I think you'll find that simply leaving the auto checkbox turned on will provide a good crop for your object. And then you could also add a shadow to your object. There's a pop-up where you can specify the size of the shadow that you'd like to add. In this case, I think I'll just leave that set to zero. And you can also feather. This causes a little bit of blending along the edge of the object. With a value of zero, for example, there's no blending, and so there will be a rather harsh transition between the object you've extracted from the background and the rest of your button design. So in general, you'll want at least a little bit of feathering, and with fuzzy objects, you might need a larger value. In this case, I think the default value of 5 is working perfectly fine. So I'm happy with that automatic background removal in this case, so I'll go ahead and apply the result by clicking on the Add to Canvas button. Clicking that button will cause the image to be processed with the background removed and the resulting image included in your button design. I'll put the balloon up at the edge of the button, maybe enlarge it a little bit, about like that I think works well. But as you can see, it is very fast and easy to automatically remove a background from many images with Build-A-Button.